Yeah, flame rates are as busted as people say. Scooch over cold projectile skeletons. New winner over here. Hey folks, welcome back to another last epic Alkalite build video. I'm going to be building and testing as many Alkalite setups as I can before the multiplayer patch so I can see what builds are the best to use in a potentially nerfed economy and to figure out what I should level up in gear for the multiplayer patch. So I'll be trying as much as I can. I'm not going to be putting a huge amount of investment time into each of these builds as I'm just trying to get a good idea before I move on. So if it can clear 300 plus corruptions and 2-4 draw rot, it gets a check mark for me and then I'll put it down or put it away. So for the most part, my blessings and stuff aren't going to be done on these characters. I got some feedback about that. It's fine. You can work around that with your gear yourself. Uh, I'm not going through all of the timelines, you know, to get everything up. I'm just trying to get like one timeline to 300 just as a proof of concept. So yeah, we're just going to run through it as quickly as we can. Anyway, after the cold projectiles build, I got a few people telling me to play flame rates. So this isn't a build I came up with per se, but again, it's just going to be good for me to personally try them so I can judge them for myself. And honestly, I wasn't sure flame rates could compete with cold skeletons because I thought the map clear was insane for those guys. Uh, but yeah, I was wrong entirely. Flame rates definitely take the cake as the best Necromancer build I've played so far. And as an added bonus, it's not hard to set it up either. The staff, Aberrant's Call, is the core of the build, but it's a pretty common staff. I had like seven of them. And I'm going to be using the Heart of Ukeros again, which I already had, for a defensive layer. But that's already pretty target farmable. So while the staff certainly isn't target farmable, you can definitely get it while you're trying to get your relic, because you can easily just grab the right echoes along the way. So what makes flame rates better than cold projectile skeletons? Well, they just scale super hard, which I wasn't expecting. The 100% damage multiplier for being stationary is nothing but a boon, because now they just function as flame turrets, and their aggro and attack range is insanely far, easily full screen. So you just drop them ahead of you and they can just clear the path for you. They also get a lot of crit scaling in their tree, which is great since we're going to be doing a crit version. Flame rates also just have a lot less button pressing, as we only really have to use the wraiths, rip blood a few times on the map clear, or just hold it on the bosses, and then space the blink every now and then, and that's pretty much it. And it's not like the cold skeletons where you're constantly refreshing shades, resummoning skeletons, spamming rip bloods, directing your minions, all that. So it just feels comfier to play too, and it's faster at times since the AI isn't much of an issue on the wraiths. We also have some extra meat bodies to block attacks and projectiles with the volatile zombies and skeleton mages, which aren't mandatory for this build by any means, you can definitely shuffle stuff around, but I feel like they're a nice block for close range enemies and some projectiles, and they just provide us with a little more extra mark for death on hit. Zombies are just free since our raids are constantly dying and they just pop up constantly to blow up enemies that get too close to us. Mapping, super comfy as the raids just blast through with little resistance. But it can be a bit scary because they kill so fast it's hard to get blood rips off at times so we often don't have our ward bubble up so if you miss like your blood rip like if you try casting it and the rates kill an enemy you just lose a life and don't get the ward back so you can kind of get yourself killed which is funny because the build just gets so good that it becomes a detriment at times because one range attack could potentially kill you potentially against bosses though it's no problem you have plenty of time to spam rip blood so you just have a huge ward to soak hits Speaking of bosses, yeah, Wraith shreds them, all of them. I'll wager that if I did get Shred Fire Res as a blessing, it would be better than the minion one I have right now, but it's fine. Tier 4 Jora, no problem. 300 plus corruption bosses, aren't a problem. We have plenty of ward through the Heart of Akeros to so just soak hits. I don't have the idol that lets us stack armor on hits for bosses, but it hasn't felt like an issue yet, so yeah, no complaints. Like, So Wraiths are just kind of gross. Let's get into the gearing, passive skills, and active skills. So this is going to be based around the Aberrant's Call staff here. Uh, this is actually a very common staff, and you can get easy, you know, 1-2 legendary potential this, so don't fret too much. Uh, 1 legendary potential is fine, but 2 is good if you can hit 2 modifiers you need. Because there's not a whole lot of stuff you can throw on a staff that's going to help a minion build, besides minion spell damage. I also got cast speed, because this also lets us summon our rates quicker. So these are the 2 stats you want for this. Other than, other than that, you just want something with, you know, high max rates and plus 3 to summon rates. So... That's what you're looking for for that. For the helmet, you do want the Profane Mask, which gives adaptive spell damage for your minions, and our race are going to be doing fireballs, which are spells. Uh, for the stats for them, obviously you just want int, minion health, uh, shared crit chance is also really good, and then just health. For the amulet, death rattle, because it's the go-to for pretty much all the minion builds, because minion crit multi is insane. For your fixes, health, mana regen, mana regen is super important for this build. Uh, if you can also get minion health, minion damage, that works fine too. 
but do try to get mana regen. For the chess piece, obviously we want summon wraith, we want intelligence, we want health. That's pretty bread and butter. For the rings, we do want turquoise rings so we can get minion life, mini damage, and more minion crit multi. So make sure that minion crit multi is high. And then for the stats, minion damage, again, mana regen, super important. Uh, you can get int as well if you can't roll man, uh, minion damage. Uh, and then crit strike avoidance and health for basically both of these. Obviously, this one doesn't have uh, minion damage, but it's got int. But, you know, it rolled with the good mana regen, so that's what we're running. So for the belt, we have minion life on this. Uh, we do still want some minion life on the build. Just because our race are going to be leeching a lot and the way we want to keep them up is by having a high health pool that they can leech more and more life from and that's going to help keep them up longer before they eventually decay. So we got minion health here and minion health regen. Minion health regen is not super important. You could probably run like intelligence or something on the belt too. Um, and then you do want crit strike avoidance on your belt. Uh, and then we have fire resistance here to kind of pop off our fire res. Uh, Poison res obviously will work fine too. I still gotta fix my reses a little bit. For the gloves, we're running Joro's Obsession. You want Joro's Obsession just because it has adaptive spell damage, which is gonna get applied to your minions. And then the extra resistances is nice, but stats on this item also apply to your minions is huge. Um, if you can get a two legendary potential one, crit strike chance and then cast speed would be super huge. Uh, if you just have like you know one legendary potential either or uh crit strike chance or cast speed even shred armor all that stuff would be really good for your rates uh but just try to get like something for that but these are really really good gloves for your rates for the boots the boots are weird i know because edoras path all right gives movement speed for you and your minions and our rates are stationary so you're like well why do you have that um honestly because they have the fat chunk of health that's the most part of it uh, and then also, because we have the entangling roots here, the, whatever that will pop up, uh, these also will decay due to our staff. And when these die, they're going to proc uh, our volatile zombies that, you know, have a chance to spawn when a minion dies. This does count for those. Obviously, it doesn't work if they just died due to the timer, but because they're getting life drained, they're easy to get killed. And then, yeah, they'll proc your volatile zombies. Now for the relic, again, we're running the Twisted Heart of Ukeros because like the other builds, the defense mechanism here is just spamming Rip Blood. And you can see our award go up and up and up. And because we have a lot of cast speed, we can spam Rip Blood really fast. So after we drop all of our wraiths down, you just spam Rip Blood and then, you know, let them go to town. For our idols, you have a lot of choices. I got a couple, you know, just increase minion fire damage idols because we're running your fire damage stuff. The suffix doesn't matter too much. I just have some fizz res and then transmit cooldown speed. Uh, I mean, you can put literally anything in the suffix. I think you just get other resistances. So if you can get like poison or void res, that's probably better off. I uh, should probably find different ones of those. Um, we have a large idol here just because it's got life and apply mark for death. Again, this isn't mandatory because we're going to have mark for death for on the increased flame wraith chance idols. So we have two of these with one mark for death and one with crit chance. You do want more crits for your minions for sure. That's a huge way to scale your damage. So if you can get like crit strike instead of a uh, mark for death on this, that's a suffix great. And then the other idols, we just have like life and ward retention. So pretty simple idols. Um, for the blessings, for the blessings, don't have anything super important. Uh, Grand resolve 20 all res is pretty huge. Increase minion damage also for the path of fire that you can get shred fire res which is really good but uh, i'm not really sure whatever one you can get fine and then just resistances where you can get them so i mean nothing super important as far as the skills goes so here's what i'm running so obviously we're gonna be running rates don't mind the fact that mine is only 15 right now i was just trying to try uh poison rates and that didn't work out uh, but basically, we're going to be coming over here to get stationary rates, so they get 100% more multiplicative damage. That's really, really big. And then you're going to want to come through here to get Wraithbringer, so you have more mana efficiency and cast speed, so you can summon a lot of rates. I picked this over the dump a bunch of rates at once, because this adds a cooldown, and it's kind of worse for mapping if they have a cooldown. So I just go fast cast speed and a lot of mana efficiency to summon as much rates as I can manually. And then you're going to want to get flame rates, of course, because that's the whole build's revolving around this and we're going to come down here to like dawn of the fall and dusk of the living to give them more crit multi which is huge and then they're also going to be able to leech some of their crit so this is how they're going to stay alive a lot longer 
And then for your other points, you can either come over here to Covenant of Souls and get two more max rates. I find it hard enough to sustain the amount of rates we have, uh, but if you want to do that, it's fine. Or you can come down here to Grave Reality and Haunting just to get, you know, more life for your rates. Not super important, but that bigger life pool does let them leech a lot easier. But that's basically the only things you really want to get here for rates. Sorry, I had a Aura of Decay on because, again, I was trying Poison Rates. Uh, again, don't mind that it's level 10, but I was running Skeleton Mages as my other skill. I like having Fire Mages on here just because we're also scaling a lot of like our minion damage and our minion fire damage. But they also provide a little bit of a meat bubble so that as I'm running in and dropping rates, I still have the Skeletons that are going to be taking a brunt of projectile hits. And they do add just, you know, a little bit of extra damage. And they help keep Mark of Death up because they're, you know, counting for all that stuff. So we run Skeleton Mages. Um, obviously, you want to finish off uh, Splinter Dominion for the extra projectiles and Argonautic Speed. Uh, you don't need Frenzy because we're getting Frenzy off the passive tree. And then, you know, just, you know, finish off your base crit chance and stuff. And, you know, pretty standard Fire Mages. Not 100% mandatory either. I just like having the Mages. Transplant. Standard transplant tree. Uh, we want to come over here to get more mana when we use transplant, so that's going to help us sustain our mana a little bit better. Bone armor over here for all the stuff, so we have a bit more armor. Um, an extra minion, just because when it dies, we can get our volatile zombie, and whenever we use transplant, we get more minion damage. That's the whole thing. Transplant, movement speed, plus a little bit of support everywhere around. Rip blood. This is just our, you know, defensive loop. So. Rip Spirits, we can get necrotic damage, so we can use Ukeros' heart. Um, Sensual Blood, so we can prioritize targets. And then, you know, the mana refund and life restore and cast speed. So we're just spamming Rip Blood. Standard Rip Blood tree. Volatile Zombies, again, these aren't super mandatory, but they are helpful. Because basically every time one of our raids dies or anything else that we have dies, we're going to get a chance to summon one of these guys. And then so we're going to just make them really fat with Grave Attunement over here. So we're going to get a lot bigger damage multiplier as well as over here in Fervor. And that's basically all we're really doing. When they die, we're going to get some ward. Uh, but to be honest, like we're not relying on this too much. I have Forceful Command because we want to keep the mana cost low because mana on this build is very stingy. Uh, but you could come over here to get Vile Force so that you can get more minions that will potentially die. But it's not super important. These are just like a little icing on the top for when your minions die. Now for the passive tree. So standard Alkalite passive tree. We're going as little into Alkalite as we can. So 20 points. Um, so yeah, just some Vitality, some Dark Rituals, and Int. Good for us. Again, coming over to Lich Sites, we get Apocrypha. So we can get 10 more Int and more Mana Region. Because Mana Region is super important for this build. And then we're coming over to Necromancer. Again, nothing too special here. Um, so we're going to come over here to Risen Army. We don't quite finish this off, um, but we could, I guess. Then I'm grabbing Reclamation of Souls because our minions are going to be kind of dying a lot as our rates decay and as we use Volatile Zombies and other stuff. So this is going to give us some more ward and ward retention, so that's good. I get a few points into Cursed Blood just so we can get Aegis Falk, which Armor Shred is really strong. And then we're going to come over here for some Mortal Tether just for a little bit of minion HP. Not super ne necessary again, but you do want some minion HP on this setup. And then we're going over here to Effigy, so we get minion fire damage. The chance to consume minions when you reach low life is going to happen a lot, to be honest, because we're constantly going to drop our life down when we use Rip Blood. However, you know, the rates don't really matter. If you hit a Skeleton Mage, no big deal. It doesn't happen all that often that it's like intrusive. So this is just, you know, 50% more damage for the most part. And then we're going to get minion fire damage plus 10, just because base damage is really strong. And we're still coming over here like the cold tree to get a cast speed, crit chance, crit leech, and all that stuff. Uh, minion, crit chance, and then crit multi. Again, we're going full crits. And then we're going to get a little bit of rights of the undeath so we get more minion elemental damage. Also increases our resistances, which is nice. Pains of Malice is where we're getting our haste and frenzy. That's pretty much always going to be up as we're going to be spamming rip blood. And then we came down here, get these three points, we can get an additional skeleton mage. This stuff, again, not mandatory. You can probably take these four points and drop them somewhere else. I don't really know where, but wherever you want, man. But that you don't need those four points. And the gear can be improved for sure. Again, I'm not doing anything crazy with any of these builds. I'm just trying to prove that they work and then move on. Or can it if it can't work. 
Now, for what else I've tried with this build, I did try running Putrid Wraiths to spam poison and then try to scale that off with Aura of Decay, lowering enemy poison resistances and giving my minions more poison damage while they're in the Aura. And yeah, it's just not good. Like, poison's kind of weird since it doesn't scale with crit at all, and we do kind of want a lot of minion poison damage or just minion damage, which, again, we're not really getting a ton of compared to crit and crit multi. So the Putrid Wraiths end up just feeling worse in general, as their initial hits are significantly weaker than Flame Wraiths, and the poison ramp up isn't even that good. I think ailments in general are super weird in Last Epic, because they don't really scale normally, and they want you to stack just infinite amounts of them. I'm not really sure if that's ever going to work for Alkalite, but that's going to be my next endeavor, is damned and poison Alkalite builds. But anyway, getting off topic. Uh, that's Flame Wraiths, it's insane, and that's going to be my new starter build for sure for the multiplayer patch. Uh, but thank you all for watching, and a special thanks to my Patreon members. I really appreciate you guys a ton, even if it doesn't sound like it. I really do. Uh, if anyone else wants to talk shop, chat, discuss anything, feel free to join the Discord in the description below. But that's all for me. Thanks again. Good luck out there, guys. Peace.